What's up guys? Welcome back. I am so excited to be sitting down and filming this video today. I thought that this would be a good time to put this out there because I've been getting, you know, a lot of questions about the Candida Cleanse and I've shared a little bit of my journey on YouTube with the Candida Cleanse and so I just wanted to make this video about everything that I ate. I also wanted to talk about my diet currently as well because it's been about a year since I've done the Candida Cleanse. I am currently able to maintain a life without the Candida overgrowth, so I thought that it would be important for me to talk about what I'm eating currently as well as what I ate during the cleanse to really get rid of the candida. So I will just begin by saying that I'm not like an expert at this or anything. This is just from my personal experience. I really think that everyone is so different. This has just worked for me and I will include other videos that I have of candida overgrowth down below as well as like my journey with it, how I got rid of it and everything. All those will be linked down below. So yeah, let's just get into it. So. About a year ago, I did a candida cleanse. I did it for about four months, pretty uh, strict candida cleanse. For me personally, it wasn't like a huge transition because about a year leading up to the cleanse, I was eating pretty much a paleo-based diet. Um, it's not exactly like a candida cleanse, but it does, it is kind of like restricted in some areas like the candida cleanse. So it wasn't like I was having a super difficult time transitioning into the cleanse. Um, I just want to say that because I know some people struggle like going right into the cleanse because you're going from like your standard American diet a lot of times to something super, super restricted and that's kind of hard to do. So if anything, I would say do it kind of gradually, not like a complete 180. So the first thing I want to talk about that I ate all the time were microgreens and sprouts, specifically broccoli sprouts. Broccoli sprouts really help that detoxification process, which is super important during your candida cleanse. It's like the highest, it, broccoli sprouts has like the highest sulforaphane so content in it, which helps with detoxification. So anyways, I ate that a lot, um, pretty much every single day. Maybe there'd be a few days that I wouldn't have it. Um, and this is something that you can easily grow in a jar. At home, a lot of times I would just go pick it up at Whole Foods. Same with the microgreens, I would go pick it up like at Whole Foods. Sprouts also has microgreens. Um, maybe you can find some at your local farmer's market. That's where I found some as well. But microgreens are just really packed with like so many different nutrients like potassium, iron, zinc. And a lot of times when you have candida overgrowth, you are depleted of a lot of different like vitamins and minerals. So it's really good to implement this on your cleanse. If you're not supplementing in a pill form, definitely try to get all the nutrients with your diet. So that's where the microgreens and the sprouts really helped me a lot, I think. I still eat them. And I also ate a lot of like leafy greens, dark leafy greens. I wouldn't say I ate kale a lot. Me and kale don't really get along. That's not like my go-to green. I would eat a lot of like arugula, spinach, um, butter lettuce. Uh, parsley, things like that that I can make like a salad with. I would eat a lot of that and just easily make a salad with that or just have it with like some protein. And so the protein, I was really, really picky about what meat I ate because I do eat meat. I'm not a vegan or anything like that. So I do eat meat, but I am very particular in the type of meat that I was eating. Um, I'm still like this. I'm still very particular with the meat that I'm eating. So for instance, if I was getting beef, I would really try to make sure that it was 100% grass fed. That tells you basically that it was raised in a pasture on a farm where it could roam and eat grass all day. It wasn't given antibiotics or hormones, which is really great. You don't want any kind of additives like that in your meat. I ate a lot of like ground beef. I would go get ground beef at like Aldi's or Trader Joe's has good ground beef. They have 100% grass fed beef. Organic free range or pasture raised chickens. That's like the best quality chicken that you can get if it's like pasture raised. Um, and I definitely always would try to get it organic. That's another thing as well as like eating things that are organic because they aren't gonna be sprayed with that pesticides and the pesticides are toxic. So you're trying to detox your body when you're doing the candida cleanse. So you don't wanna put any additional like toxins in your body. So just be aware of that as well. Obviously I didn't eat 100% organic every single day all the time, but like when I could, I would try to eat organic. I would eat a lot of fish. So wild caught salmon was a go-to. Definitely get your fish wild caught because that's going to be the best quality fish that you can get. 
Um, but yeah, I really just ate beef, fish, ground turkey, um, organic ground turkey, chicken. Mm, I ate eggs, of course. I ate eggs a lot um, for breakfast. Yeah, it's just really important to try to get high quality meat whenever you can if you are someone who eats meat. So I would also incorporate non-starchy vegetables. So these are things like asparagus, cauliflower, cabbage. Um, I would definitely try to get like a variety of different vegetables in my diet because you're kind of wanting to build up your gut microbiome and feed the good bacteria in your gut and so giving your gut a diverse range of food and not like eating the same thing every day really helps with giving that good bacteria the nutrients it needs to thrive um, instead of feeding the bad bacteria so that's what I did I really tried to eat a uh, range of different vegetables, uh, zucchini, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage. Yeah, I wasn't like super restricted on the vegetables that I would eat. I wouldn't necessarily eat high starchy food like white potatoes. I would, however, eat sweet potatoes. I would have sweet potatoes maybe like once or twice a week. It wasn't something that I would eat every single day, but it's not like you wanna do like no carbs ever. You just kinda wanna do like a lower carb diet you know like it's not like you're cutting out all the carbs you're having them kind of in moderation I would say I also want to say that I did do a video on foods that I avoided and I'll link that up there for you just so you can understand what I didn't eat as well I love bread and obviously you can't have bread during the candida cleanse you can't have grains gluten anything like that so I love pasta I love bread all those things so it was really important to me to find alternatives to that my go-to was like almond flour I would have have almond flour biscuits which are really amazing there's a lot of different recipes on Pinterest for that um, cassava flour is great uh, you also can use buckwheat flour I didn't really use that as often but you can use buckwheat flour but really my go-to was almond flour coconut flour cassava flour those were like the three main ones that I used a lot. I also ate cassava flour pasta. There's a brand called Jovial that I get at Whole Foods. I'm sure you can get it online too, but it was so good. It honestly saved me so many times because I needed something quick. I would just have some Jovial pasta. I never felt like super restricted or super, what's the word? What's the word I'm looking for? Super. I never felt like I was missing out on something. I always tried to find an alternative to my favorite meals. So if it was pasta, I would find grain-free pasta, bread, grain-free bread. And obviously you do probably need to cook a lot at home. I definitely developed a love for cooking during this whole process. <laughs> There's no way really around that. I know there are some brands out there that do make grain-free paleo friendly alternatives but a lot of the times those have like sugar in them as well so it's just better to make them at home so you can limit your sugar intake because that's something that you definitely want to do during the cleanse. Speaking of sugar, I wanted to say that if I was craving something sweet, because I know a lot of people have a hard time with their cravings, with their sweet cravings, sugar cravings, I did have berries. I would have blueberries, strawberries, raspberries. I would make smoothies with that with some collagen powder some almond milk, hemp seeds, things like that. I would have like a smoothie if I was craving something sweet. I wouldn't have this like necessarily all the time, every single day. I would always try to get like the lower amount of sugar, like berries have lower amount than some fruit, let's say like mango or bananas. I eat berries, you know, pretty often. I don't think that that's gonna like ruin your cleanse in any kind of way. But again, you might be different than me, so just keep that in mind. I also cooked a lot with different spices and herbs, which are like antifungal, so thyme, oregano, cinnamon, mint, all these things are really good to incorporate because they have antifungal properties. And I also had a lot of antifungal foods, so onion, garlic, I would cook with those a lot. I would also make my own dressings a lot. You know, I would put just random things in a blender and blend it up and hope that it tasted good. It honestly was a very experimental time. I'll definitely do a video of different dressings if you want that because that's something that I think is really important because for me, the dressings make or break the food. There's some dressings at Trader Joe's that you can get, but honestly, you can make your own really easily. My go-to was like apple cider vinegar, which is an antifungal, tahini, some lemon, olive oil, some garlic, and you just make it the right consistency, and it's 
really good honestly I would have that on most of my meals on like salads and things so I was definitely getting antifungals every single day not only with the supplements I took but with the food as well I do have a video on all the supplements that I took I will link that down below for sure I also ate a lot of like nuts and seeds I would make sure that it would kind of be low in mold contents nuts and seeds can sometimes be higher in mold and you want to obviously avoid mold during this time. I mean, you should always avoid mold, but definitely during this time. So I would have things like almond, pumpkin seeds. Pumpkin seeds are a great antifungal, so I would definitely have those a lot. Sesame seeds, sunflower seeds, chia seeds, flax seeds. I would make chia seed pudding a lot. It's great, really high in fiber as well, which is really important to get your fiber intake. So chia seeds, flax seeds, you can make like a flax seed pudding too. You can even make flax seed bread, which I've done, I have a video on that as well. And you can have that type of like bread during the cleanse. I think it's really good, I'll link that video too. And last thing is healthy fats. I would have avocado, olive oil, avocado oil, things like that. I would definitely not recommend like canola oil and those types of oils, but Healthy fats, really important in your diet in general, but in the cleanse too, I would definitely incorporate some avocados, nuts and seeds, things like that. That's basically everything I had during my cleanse. And currently my diet is mainly paleo. If you've been following my channel and the videos that I put out, I have been trying to heal my leaky gut as well. So I had candida overgrowth and I found out I had leaky gut. I really haven't gone back to the way that I used to eat. Um, and I do want to say that I really did eat pretty standard American diet. I would go out to eat, I would go to Chick-fil-A, fast food, I would go out partying, drinking, all those things. So I really did have to change my lifestyle completely. Like I am, uh, I am a very different person than I was before I started the cleanse. It really, it really does make you question like who you're surrounding yourself with, what you're eating, where you're going, your daily life, things like that. But yeah, I'm basically eating pretty much the same food. I don't really try to incorporate that many antifungals in my diet anymore. Of course, I have things like garlic every once in a while. I'm not super strict on the antifungals that I'm eating and I am eating more fruit now. I'm eating bananas again, which I freaking love uh, because bananas make your smoothie like so much better. So I've been incorporating more things slowly. I would reintroduce them slowly. So I would have like a banana, maybe once a week starting out, then go into twice a week, seeing how my body feels with that. Cause I know fruit has really high amounts of sugar. Uh, same thing with honey. So I would, when I would bake, sometimes I incorporate more honey now than I did during the cleanse. Uh, but I definitely don't try to go like overboard with the sweets. I really don't have any refined sugar. I don't really go out and buy like baked goods. If I want like a baked good, I'll just make it myself. So yeah, I really do still try to avoid the sugar intake. I don't really have any grains either. I do not have gluten. I've recently started to incorporate a little bit of rice in my diet, but that's not something that I would necessarily like recommend you doing right away, but I have incorporated things like that slowly just to see how my body reacts. Basically, I am eating more paleo-based, but still really focusing on whole nourishing foods. I don't really eat out a lot, and if I do eat out, I'll try to get something like a salad and protein, some veggies. So. I cook a lot and that's something that you're probably gonna have to do. Not a lot of restaurants even know what a candida cleanse is. It's not something that you would necessarily have a lot. Oh, I also wanted to say that I would have soups a lot, like warm soups. I still have very warm nourishing soups a lot. You can make like a really good butternut squash soup or I would make kind of this Thai inspired soup with coconut milk and coconut milk is a good antifungal as well. I'll have potatoes now, um, not every day. So really just trying to mix up my diet every day. That's how I've kept the candida overgrowth from coming back is I really think just the low amount of sugar. I don't really drink that much alcohol. Well, I don't eat gluten and grains. So I think just me doing that really keeps the candida at bay and not develop an overgrowth anymore. But that's just me 
like I said, everyone's really different. So uh, it's not like I'm never going to have bread or gluten or dairy again. It's definitely something that I'll have in the future, like in moderation. Just probably not every single day starting out, but you can definitely follow along in my journey and I'll keep you updated on like how I'm feeling. And I think that's all that I have for you. I hope this video helped you. I hope you get some inspiration from this. Definitely reach out if you have any questions. And if you are doing the cleanse, I wish you the best of luck. You got this. It's honestly so worth it. It's been a year since I've done it now and I'm still feeling really great. And yeah, I just wish you all the best of luck. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.